The National Communications Network, in collaboration with the National Center for Resource Development and the Ministry of Education, presents CXC in Focus, a focus on the key subject areas of mathematics and English for students preparing to write the exams. Welcome to another program, CXC Mathematics in Focus. Lesson 33, Solving Simultaneous Equations Using the Matrix Method. In this lesson, we will calculate the inverses of 2 by 2 matrices and solve simultaneous equations using the matrix method. The inverse of a 2 by 2 matrix. Example 1. Calculate the inverse of matrix M, which is equal to 5, 1, 4, 2. Here's the solution. Step 1. Calculate the determinant of the given matrix M, which is 5, 1, 4, Four, two. The determinant of M is equal to AD minus BC. Substituting values for A, B, C, and D, we'll have the determinant equal to 5 times 2 minus 1 times 4, which will give us 6. The next step is to interchange the elements along the leading diagonal of M. That is 2, 1, 4, 5. And notice the leading diagonal of M. The leading diagonal has 5 and 2. So we interchange, so the 2 will go to the top and the 5 will come at the bottom. Step 3. Multiply the elements along the other diagonal by minus 1. That is, you will have minus 1 on the top row to the right and minus 4 on the first element in the bottom row. There's another way of saying that. Instead of saying multiply by minus 1, we say just change the sign to the opposite. Step 4. Divide the resulting matrix by the determinant. So the matrix given as 2, minus 1, minus 4, 5, that matrix is divided by the determinant, which is 6. So it can be expressed as 1 sixth of 2, minus 1, minus 4, 5. So the inverse of matrix M, which is written as m to negative 1 as the index, and notice the notation, m to the minus 1 is 1 sixth of 2 minus 1 minus 4, 5. In general, if matrix A is equal to A, B, C, D, then the inverse of matrix A is written as 1 over the determinant in the denominator there, which is AD minus BC times D minus B minus C A. Example 2. The matrix M is 3, 1, 2, 6. Find M inverse. Question taken from CXE January 2006. Here's the solution. M inverse is equal to 1 over AD minus BC. Then you have A and that should be B C, D, the sign supposed to be changed here. So it's 1 over 3 times 6 minus 1 times 2 times 
6 minus 1 minus 2, 3. That will give us 1 over 16 times 6 minus 1 minus 2, 3. So m inverse is equal to, as you see there, solving simultaneous equation using a matrix method. Example 1. Let us look at a pair of simultaneous equations, and they are given here. 3x plus 2y is equal to 6. 5x plus 4y is equal to 20. The equation can be written in the form where you have a matrix times another matrix equal to a matrix. The first matrix, 3, 2, 5, 4, those are the coefficients of x and y. And x and y, the next matrix, would represent the matrix containing the variables x and y. 6 and 20 will represent the constant value, which is on the right-hand side of the equation, which is 6 and 20. So first step would be to find the inverse of the matrix 3, 2, 5, 4 which would be written as 1 over 3 times 4 minus 2 times 5 times the matrix 4 minus 2 minus 5, 3. This can be simplified as a half times matrix 4 minus 2 minus 5, 3. Now, the next step would be to pre-multiply both sides of the equation by the inverse. That is, the equation is in matrix form is given first. 3, 2, 5, 4 times xy is equal to 620. That equation is multiplied by the, the, the inverse, which is 1 over 2 times the matrix 4 minus 2 minus 5, 3. That can be set down as shown below as a half into 4 minus 2 minus 5, 3 times matrix 3, 2, 5, 4 times matrix x, y is equal to the inverse here, a half times matrix 4 minus 2 minus 5, 3 times the matrix containing the constant term 6, 20. The left hand side of the equation can be simplified as a half into 12 minus 10, 8 minus 8, minus 15 plus 15, minus 10 plus 12, all that times x, y which is equal to a half into 24 minus 40 minus 30 plus 60. And when that line is further simplified, we will have a half into 2, 0, 0, 2 times matrix X, Y, which is equal to a half into matrix minus 16, 30. We'll now have the identity matrix 1, 0, 0, 1 times xy is equal to minus 8, 15. 1, 0, 0, 1 is a unit matrix. So the unit matrix times the other matrix will give us the other matrix. So we'll have xy is equal to minus 8, 15, which will allow us to conclude that x is equal to minus 8, and y is equal to 15. So the solution to the pair of simultaneous equation will give us x equal to minus 8, y is equal to 15. Here's another example. Given the linear equations 2x plus 5y equals 6, 3x plus 4y equals 8, write the equations in the form 
AX is equal to B, where A, X, and B are matrices. This question is taken from CXC January 2007. Here's the solution. We take the coefficients of X and Y to set up the first matrix, which will give us 2, 5, 3, 4, and a matrix containing the variable x, y is equal to the matrix containing the constant term. This is in the form ax plus ax is equal to b. The first matrix is your matrix A. The second matrix, x, y, is represented by matrix X, and matrix B is represented as 6, 8. <coughs> Here is your problem for today. The matrix M is equal to 3, 1, 2, 6. Part 1. Find M inverse. Part 2. Hence, Calculate the value of x and y for which m times xy, m being the matrix, is equal to 12 minus 8. This question is taken from CXC January 2006. This is the problem that was given to you in the last lesson. Given that matrix D is equal to 1, 9p, p, 4, is a, is a single matrix, determine the value or the values of p, CXE January 2007. Here is the solution. Since D is equal to 1, 9p, p, 4, is, is a single matrix, then the determinant of D written as AD minus BC is equal to 0, which will give us, when the values are substituted, 1 times 4 minus 9P times P is equal to 0, which will give us 4 minus 9P squared is equal to 0, or 9P squared is equal to 4, P is equal to plus or minus the square root of 4 ninths, which will give us P is equal to plus or minus 2 thirds. This brings us to the end of today's program, CXC Mathematics in Focus. In today's lesson, we're going to look at figurative language. It is important for you to be able to identify figurative language and their effectiveness since for your CSEC examination A, you would have to answer comprehension questions based on figurative language. You would also have to be able to interpret figurative language in order to fully understand a poem or a passage. In addition, you will also want to use figurative language in your short stories and persuasive essays to make them more interesting. Let us begin by examining what is figurative language. Figurative language uses the literal dictionary meaning of words to convey other meaning to the words. Figurative language is not new to any of us because we constantly use them every day in our speech without even being conscious of it. For example, when we refer to someone as a mule or a donkey, we are using figurative language without even thinking. Sometimes you may have done something that your mother does not like and she tells you, wonderful, you have done a good job. Obviously, your mother means the opposite. So language is used here figuratively. Why do we use figurative language? 
We use them for the following reasons. To make meaning clearer, to emphasize what is said, to create vivid pictures, and to add interest to your work. In addition, we use them to arouse the imagination. Let us now look at some specific figures of speech. Firstly, the simile. The simile is a figure of speech in which two things are compared using the words like or as. Students, I am sure that you have done quite a lot of these and you can find many of them in your textbooks. Why do we use similes? Similes are used for the following reasons. To reveal feelings, to make meaning clearer, to emphasize what is said, and to create vivid pictures. Let us look at some examples of similes. Pleasures are like poppies. You pluck the flower, the bloom is shed. Here, the writer compares pleasures to poppies to show how short-lived pleasure is. I have a problem which is eating away my insides like acid on a car battery. In this example, the writer compares the effect of his problems to acid on a car battery. This comparison is used to highlight the magnitude of the problem and the turbulence of the person's feelings. Now let us look at another figure of speech. Metaphor. The metaphor is a comparison of two things without the use of like or as. Whereas the simile says something is like another, the metaphor says one thing is another. Let us look at these examples. Example A, the trees crowned the hill. B, she's an angel. In the first example, the trees are compared to a crown, which you all know is a beautiful headpiece. So the metaphor is used in this sentence to tell how beautiful the hill looked with the trees on top of it. Here, a vivid picture is created of how the hill looked. Suppose we did not use the metaphor. We would have said, the hill looks beautiful with the trees on top of it. Clearly, you can see that the sentence which contains the metaphor is more vivid than the other. Let us look at the next example where the girl is compared to an angel. What does this mean? It means the girl has virtuous qualities, but instead of saying that she has virtuous qualities, we use the metaphor angel, which makes the meaning clearer. Now, students, we will look at personification. Personification is a figure of speech in which human attributes are given to abstract and inanimate objects. For example, I bring fresh water for the thirsting flowers. The gray-eyed morn smiles on the frowning night. Death lays its icy hands on kings and beggars alike. In the first example, flowers are given a human attribute, thirst. This helps to emphasize how much in need the flowers were of water. In the second example, human attributes are given to the morning and the night, and this helps to create a happy picture of the morning and a discontented picture of the night. In the third example, death is given a human attribute which helps to create an atmosphere of fear or dread. Boys and girls, we will now look at irony. And there are three types of irony, dramatic, situational, and verbal. 
Let us look at dramatic irony. Have you ever seen a horror movie that has a killer on the loose? You and the rest of the audience know that teenagers should not go walking in the woods late at night, but they think a midnight stroll would be romantic. Needless to say, the teens become the next victim. Dramatic irony occurs when the audience knows something that the actors do not know. We will now look at situational irony. We encounter situational irony constantly in our lives. For example, you are hurrying to class at the university, even going as far as to miss an important appointment because you do not want to be absent. When you get there, you find that the lecturer is absent. Here is another scenario. You stay up all night studying for a test scheduled for the next day. When you go to class, you discover that the test is not until the next day. So what is situational irony? This is when a situation turns out to be opposite of what is expected. We will now look at what is verbal irony. Verbal irony occurs when we say something but mean the opposite. For example, your friend shows up in ripped jeans and a stained t-shirt. With a smirk you say, oh, I see you're dressed up for a date. We must be going to a posh restaurant. Have you ever noticed how many dilapidated old houses adorn our highways and main roads? In the first example, it is obvious that she did not mean that they would be going to a posh restaurant since her friend was dressed inappropriately for that. What is the purpose of irony in this case? That is right. It is used for criticism. In the second example, it is obvious that the word adorn is used ironically since the houses were all dilapidated so could not beautify or adorn the environment. Here again, irony is used to criticize. Some other purposes of irony are to emphasize a point, to create humor. And now, boys and girls, you must note, you must not confuse irony with coincidence. Coincidence is when two things happen at the same time. Irony is when the opposite of what you would expect happens. If you meet your friend in the grocery store because she just happened to be there when you did, it is coincidental, not ironic. If, however, a man who made his living running a dairy is run over and killed by a milk truck, making its morning round. It is ironic. Why? Because you would not expect the man's life work to be the cause of his death. Sometimes, students, you have a difficulty recognizing irony. So we would like you to consider the following tips which would help you to do so. Listen to the writer's tone. The writer's tone could indicate whether he or she is being ironic. Look for contrasts. For example, dilapidated adorn, as this can indicate whether the writer is being ironic or not. We will continue to look at figures of speech in our subsequent lessons. On behalf of the team Bibi Ali, Parmeshwar Lal and Ron Chichester, I'm Ingrid Fong saying thank you for viewing.
The National Communications Network, in collaboration with the National Center for Resource Development and the Ministry of Education, presents CXC in Focus, a focus on the key subject areas of mathematics and English for students preparing to write the exams. Welcome to another program, CXC Mathematics in Focus. Lesson 34, Transformation Matrices. <laughs> 